We also just adopted our reports as a portfolio committee on the revised uh, budget and APP of the department. And we did this, uh, our recommendation, knowing that uh, besides the challenges of COVID that is bringing, especially on the fiscal constraints, the expectation of the sector is still high, and we will walk the path together with the department to make sure that we achieve more with the little resources that we have. Having said that, Minister, I'm going to hand over to you for today's uh, items. We're going to start right away. I don't know if there are any apologies from your side, but the next uh, item that you are here for is the update by the Department on Development and Finalization of the Farmers Registered in All Provinces. We will also, after deliberations, deal with the progress reports by the Department of the Implementation of Constitutional Court ruling regarding the settlement of labor tenants and claims. So let me hand over to your good self, Honorable Minister, and uh, you will hand over to the team for the set presentations. Thanks. Thank you very much, Chairperson, uh, Honorable Members. Director General, senior officials, parliamentary staff, ladies and gentlemen. Chairperson, indeed, we also want to join you as the department in expressing our heartfelt condolences to the chairperson of the committee, Honorable Mandela, and the entire Mandela family. He sees with Sabatim, friends and comrades for the loss of Ambassador Zinzi Mandela Shongwani. We also heard this morning of the loss of the grandmother, the passing away rather of the grandmother of the chairperson. We are with him and the family in our thoughts and prayers. We also wish all those who have departed their family to gain strength during this difficult time. In the same vein, we remember those that are battling with the pandemic at this current time, and we hope that we will continue to join hands as a nation to protect and support one another. Chairperson and honorable members, today we will present to you two important work that our department is engaged in. Firstly, we will take members through on how far we've gone in the development of the farmer register. Secondly, we will inform the members on how we're implementing the court judgment on the labor tenants. I do think the latter talks to the targets we shared with members last week when we presented the revised annual performance plan following the supplementary budget. Chairperson, honorable members, both these presentations talk to the continuity of government work from the fifth to the sixth administration. In 2018, the department launched the process of developing a producer stroke farmer register focusing primarily on smallholder farmers, the area which is less understood in our sector. The Farmer Register aims to collect data on farmers, farm sizes, production structures, and income levels. This type of data, Chairperson, gives us a sense of the South African smallholder farmers' profile. We get to know the size and typologies of farmers we typically talk about. Where are they farming in the country? What do they farm with? What infrastructure and support that is available or needed for their production? Chairperson, it is our belief that the information from the farmer register is necessary to, for proper planning and government to develop appropriate support measures about production as well as markets and other various development programs. The COVID-19 intervention we implemented to assist smallholder farmers has offered us an opportunity to gather more information on smallholder farmers who applied for this intervention. The farmer information received is being incorporated in the broader farmer register process. Chairperson, it is important to indicate that the farmer register project is driven internally and using available resources. Our extension officers in various provinces have been critical in the collection of data from the farmers. This work is ongoing, although not as fast as we would have liked. In some provinces, you will see the percentage of work done is not satisfactory. Our Deputy Director 
General Mr. Khobogwe, who is responsible to drive this project, has been visiting provinces to impress upon them the importance of this project, not just for the National Department, but also for the entirety of government. An agreement was also reached with Statistics South Africa that where technical support is needed on data analysis, they would support us with relevant expertise that may not lie in our department. Honorable members, the Farmer Register project has been running concurrently with census on commercial agriculture that was recently published by Statistics South Africa. The launch of the census of commercial agriculture report was given at the beginning of March 2020 and an official handover was done. Some of the critical information that the census report is highlighting is that the consolidation process which commenced in 1997, when the sector was deregulated, is still ongoing. By consolidation, I refer to a process where commercial farm units are getting larger and commercial farm numbers are declining, leading into growing concentration levels in the sector. Today, we have 40,122 commercial farms and about 6.5 of these farms are considered large farms but are responsible for over half of total agricultural employment and two-thirds of agricultural income. The commercial census also revealed that the majority of farms were in livestock, followed by mixed farming and the last being field crops. Provinces with some of these farms that I'm referring to in 2017 were in the Free State, Western Cape, Northwest, and Northern Cape. Gauteng, Pumalanga, and Limpompo had the list of commercial farms. Encouragingly, the commercial census information affirms what we have already known, that most of our country's land is farmable, but not necessarily arable, which is an indication of the cost of investment that is put to ensure the productivity of the land and also in supporting the livestock sector. Secondly, the concentration levels in the sector are growing, which makes it more difficult for smallholder farmers to participate meaningfully in the formal agricultural value chain. The information from the census also indicates that livestock is by far the main farming activity in commercial farms. That includes uh, cattle, sheep, uh, goat, but also game farming. We look forward to what will emerge in from the farmer register. This particular data will be important in understanding where to channel resources for development in the coming years, as we will have a better understanding of the structure of the South African farming uh, sector. Chairperson, it is our view that the work that was pioneered by our former minister, Honorable Zogwana, remains important as it will assist us as government with necessary information from which we can plan interventions that will improve the agricultural sector in South Africa. We will also share this report once concluded with the Ministry and Department of Fisheries and Forestry, given that when the project commenced, these two areas of responsibility were under the Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries. Chairperson, I thank you for allowing me to just give an opening remarks and also make some observations on the census report that was done by States SA, as well as the ongoing work on the farmer register. I will now want to hand over to the director general to actually take us through on the detailed presentation together with his team. Thank you very much, Honorable Clapper. Thanks, uh, Minister. Did you? Uh, thank, thank, thank you very much, uh, honorable members uh, and minister. Uh, I'm going to be taking the committee through the labor tenant uh, presentation, and uh, DDG Joe Hobokwe would be presenting the, the farmer uh, register uh, project. We have on the screen the farmer register project. DDG Hobokwe will present that one. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, DG. Uh, good morning to Minister, 
uh, to the chairperson of the PC and to the honorable members uh, of the portfolio committee. Uh, that is our presentation outline. I will not spend time on that, uh, but I want to emphasize, uh, Chairperson, uh, that our minister has given a, a good background and an overview uh, in terms of this project, and therefore I'm not going to waste a lot of time in terms of introduction and background. The uh, minister has already indicated that we're, we're in partnership. I'm on slide under introduction and background. We're in partnership with State South Africa, assisting us uh, with the technical expertise. We signed an MOU with them. Uh, the MOU was signed on the 4th of April uh, 2018. Uh, in terms of the MOU, uh, as Minister has already ably described and explained, uh, State South Africa was to conduct the census on commercial agriculture, and uh, the Department of Agriculture, former Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries, was to conduct, was to implement the farmer register. Now, let's go to the next slide, please. Uh, that slide, honorable members, is just a depiction of the obligations of the two departments as far as the Memorandum of Understanding uh, uh, is concerned. Uh, as you can see, uh, the COCA, as it is commonly referred to, census on uh, commercial agriculture, uh, it was supposed to be a one-year project, as we can see there. And the farmer register, producer farmer register, uh, was supposed to be a three-year project starting from April 2018-19 financial year up to uh, end of March 2021, so that we have a, a, a three-year period. Uh, those are the obligations in terms of the two uh, departments, what was expected. Uh, from State South Africa that they would provide technical support uh, and advice to the department. And uh, uh, secondly, that ultimately uh, they will focus on the census uh, on commercial agriculture and generate a report. Uh, Minister has already indicated that uh, uh, this census report uh, was officially handed over to Minister on the 23rd uh, of March of this year. So that unit of work has already been completed. On the other hand, the farmer register is still continuing. As I indicated, it is a three-year three project. The next slide, please. The next slide is the conceptual basis of the farmer register. Honorable Chair, uh, please allow me not to go through this slide because Minister has substantiated on it why we need uh, the farmer register. Above, uh, 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 all in all, uh, as we, we, we all know, uh, we cannot manage what we cannot measure. And uh, we need to know, as Minister indicated, this is a very important category of our farming sector. We need to know more about it. The next slide, please. The next slide is, is a, that pyramid is a depiction of the category of farmers as um, categorized in our uh, producer, in our producer development support policy. I know that members have had an opportunity of interacting with this policy, which has been developed by the, by the department. In that policy, you find the categorization of farmers. And the idea behind this categorization of farmers is so that uh, a fit for purpose support uh, could be uh, conceptualized for the different uh, categories of farmers. So our category is that one, uh, smallholder farmers. And in terms of this uh, uh, depiction, uh, 
uh, smallholder farmers would refer to those farmers that are making a turnover of between uh, 50,000 and 1 million per, per annum. So let's go to the next slide, please. Now, one of the issues that uh, uh, honorable members wanted to know about uh, are the key variables. In other words, once we have this information uh, finalized, analyzed and finalized, uh, what is it that we expect to, to know about this category of farmers? Now, in making sure that we, we get the information that we want, we developed a questionnaire. This questionnaire was consulted widely, uh, including with our uh, provincial departments, uh, counterparts, uh, including uh, State South Africa. Uh, such that it is a questionnaire which will be able to uh, give us the information which we, we require. Uh, this is the questionnaire which is used by extension officers, as Minister was saying earlier, on the ground as they collect information. As they collect information, they make sure that on the form they complete, uh, all these uh, variables uh, obtain uh, the necessary information about the farmer. Uh, we have got section one there, which is actually focusing on the producer personal and demographic details, the name, the ID, the gender, uh, and uh, the, the age, uh, age categories. And then you have got the section two there, which is talking to production. Uh, Minister has touched on this, uh, honorable members, so I will not belabor that point. Can we go to the next slide? The next slide, uh, honorable members, uh, uh, demonstrates the implementation uh, process flow. What is it that we did when we implemented the different phases which had to be put in place uh, to ensure that we implement the project. Firstly, uh, we had to consult with industry. We established uh, the, the, a forum of inst industry role players, members of commodity organizations, uh, representatives of farmers, uh, unions, and so forth. Uh, we used this structure as a reference group. Uh, once we have done work, at the end of each quarter, we would call this structure and we would share with them in terms of uh, what is it that we have done. They are a very, very important structure in the sense that uh, they are there, they are out there, uh, and in case we encountered some obstacles, uh, they would assist uh, remove such obstacles. Uh, they are with the farmers. The second thing uh, is what we have already said, uh, our partnership with State South Africa to provide us with the technical expertise. And the third important thing that we did was to train extension officers because uh, they couldn't just start with this work without uh, being orientated, without being taught in terms of how to do it. And then the fourth, we did a media launch where we created awareness. Uh, we created awareness through radio, we even had uh, television uh, adverts, uh, which we used to create awareness. And then uh, we also procured IT equipment. As we speak, we do have this IT equipment in the department, uh, servers where this information is stored. As we speak, this information is stored in the Department of Agriculture, the information which has already been collected. Uh, honorable members, I would like to also emphasize that uh, internally we had about seven work streams which were uh, dealing with this exercise. We have consulted widely with provinces up to now. On a weekly basis, we, we communicate with provinces to indicate to them how far we are, how much information has been consulted. So this is how we, we went about implementing the project. The next slide, please. This next slide, uh, honorable members, 
uh, is a reflection on the interruption that was caused by uh, the outbreak of COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, uh, it, it created uh, an interruption of some sort. By the time the uh, the, the pandemic uh, uh, was 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 uh, announced. Uh, the the project had, was was at its peak. We're really moving at a very very admirable speed. Uh, but then we we got interrupted for about two months. Uh, but I must indicate that uh, as soon as the country was brought down to level three, we resuscitated the the project, uh, but uh, uh, adopting a risk-adjusted uh, approach, making sure that as extension officers go out to collect information, they have the necessary protective uh, equipment. Uh, since the resumption of data collection under the lockdown, honorable members, we have been able to collect additional information on more than 9,000 uh, farmers. Can we go to the next slide, please? The next slide uh, is just a data collection methodology. I will not belabor that point, honorable members. Suffice to say that uh, extension officers, our, our, our enumerators, our target group, smallholder farmers, and these enumerators, extension officers, are not just operating on their own. They are under the supervision of the provincial departments of agriculture and the, the national department. The next slide, please. This would therefore be the uh, most important slide uh, of the presentation. And Minister has already touched a little on it, uh, talking specifically about some of the provinces which are uh, not performing uh, as expected. Honorable members, uh, that's the uh, table that we are using. Uh, at the top there is the province, then the next is number of farmers registered to date. To date, we have 89,615 uh, farmers that have been registered. The next column is the estimated smallholder farmers per province as pronounced on by State South Africa. They conducted a, a, a community survey in 2016, and these are the figures that they have brought forward to say per province, that is the estimated number of uh, smallholder farmers. And, and the total would therefore be uh, 133,288. Uh, honorable members, as at present, we can say 67.23% of uh, data has been collected, and uh, uh, I must also indicate that uh, the two provinces which Minister referred to uh, are Gauteng, which is uh, still at a very, very low percentage, 16.4%, uh, followed by Northwest, which is at 22.8%. Uh, but we are doing all we can, we are doing all we can uh, to make sure that these figures improve. Uh, we will still be running uh, this data collection uh, for the next two months, and we have made sure that we put pressure on these two provinces uh, such that they intensify the data collection such that uh, they will be able to, to reach their target. That is the, the, the status of honorable members. Can we go to the next slide, please? The next slide uh, is a reflection on the next steps, honorable members. What is going to happen uh, 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 once we, we have collected all information? The first thing that is going to, that we have to mention is that uh, we will complete data collection by the end of August. Uh, that is our target date, and subsequent to that, data has to be analyzed. The analysis of data is going to be a very, very important uh, unit of work, and we will do this work jointly with State South Africa. State South Africa will assist us. Uh, and once the, the, the information has been analyzed, 
uh, there will be GIS mapping uh, where we will know where these farmers are, where they are concentrated and so forth per province. And then we are hoping that uh, by October, uh, we will be able to request uh, the Honorable uh, Minister to uh, officially uh, receive the uh, the the final report of, of of the farmer register. Can we go to the next slide, please? Now, in terms of the budget allocation, honourable members, uh, uh, this project, as I indicated, uh, is 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 a three-year project. It was supposed to commence in 2017-18, uh, and. During that financial year, we were to get 90 million, which is the first trench uh, of the project. Uh, however, uh, because we were signing an agreement with State South Africa, there were a number of issues that we needed to agree on. Uh, first of all, State South Africa is doing their work in terms of the Act of Parliament. And in terms of this Act, they are not allowed to share uh, the information they have collected on farmers with any other person. They are not supposed to, to share those details. And uh, we wanted to do this thing jointly with them, but it was a gray area. And as a result of that, we took long, you know, uh, especially from State South Africa to, to, to sign the MOU. But ultimately, they signed the MOU. I think it was... Uh, end of March when they signed the MOU. And from the department side, it was only signed on the 4th of April of 2018. And 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 we had lost that, that whole financial year. So that that money had to be to be taken back to National Treasury. So the second trench uh, is what is reflected there, honorable members. 55 million had to be allocated to State South Africa. 45 million uh, would then uh, be used uh, for the producer farmer register. 2019 20, 51 million, the last trench, uh, 5 million to State South Africa, 46 million uh, uh, for the producer farmer register. The, the, the next slide on expenditure. Now, in terms of the expenditure, honorable members, uh, the first year, as, as indicated there, we did not spend in 2017. We started uh, uh, spending in 2018-19, uh, 92,000, I mean 92.6 million uh, was the expenditure, uh, but we were unable to spend 7.3 million. Uh, the allocated budget for that financial year was 100 million. Uh, for 2019-20, uh, the allocated budget was 51 million, and we were able to spend 37.9 million, and we were not able to spend uh, 13, point, 13 million. Uh, honorable members and uh, 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 chairperson, I would like to emphasize here that in doing the farmer register, uh, we had a lot of dependencies. Uh, for example, a lot of, because this work involves a lot of IT work, uh, one of our dependencies was the CETA, State IT Agency. And uh, they needed to run some of the contracts for us. Uh, I must indicate to honorable members that unfortunately, uh, they were unable to run uh, some of the uh, some of the projects for us uh, successfully. Uh, they had to run uh, a tender uh, of about uh, 10 million at one stage, but that tender was not able to to take off, and that accounts for some of our uh, low expenditure. But I must also indicate, honourable members, that. Uh, uh, for the 2019-20 financial year, uh, the COVID-19 also contributed, uh, although not substantially. Uh, thank you, honorable members. Thanks, uh, Dr. Kwaboko. 
Honorable members, that is the presentation. Can we engage with the, the presentation on the farmer register? Is Honorable Masho around? Honorable Masho, you manage to connect back? Not yet. Honorable Chaiten? Are you with us? Is she still in the kitchen? Honorable Briet? Thank you. Sorry, Chairperson. I was just on an important telephone call regarding one of our municipalities. Um, Chairperson, not so saw a question, maybe just as a statement um, or, or for the department's information um, with regard to the farmer register. And, and I hear we've spent so, so many millions on our specifically our extension offices and the people set out to conduct these um, to conduct these census, census, censuses, whatever the, the plural of that is. But in the free state, we had we really had immense trouble with this. Um, I had farmers who was not aware of it or, or for some reason, and then all of a sudden an extension, extension officer got hold of them and actually sent them quite threatening SMSs and told them that they will be arrested should they not um, should they not reply or respond within seven days or within two days and um, was one of them to these to the census that they need to complete and that they have to complete and that is that is um, legislatively requested from them and then it was the first and and the only time that they have heard of this or even seen a documentation form so so to a large extent um, and I know there was was quite advertising in that that regard and I remember I spoke to the former um, DG of, of Duff Mr Mike Mutlingana um, in this regard and I would not like to see us actually have you know and I had a number of farmers phone me in that regard that were, were really quite upset in the way these extension offers handled them and handled the census um, so maybe that would just be my only comment um, uh, with with regard to this for today. Thank you, Chairperson. Thanks, Honorable Britt. Honorable Mbabama. Um, thank you very much, Chair. I do have a couple of questions. The first one is, what assistance is there for farmers below the smallholder? Or are they not part of this altogether? Could I just get an explanation on that? And then secondly, which industry stakeholders were workshopped and when? I would really appreciate to get a schedule of which were the stakeholders that were workshopped. When did that workshop take place in terms of the dates? and the provinces so that we can do oversight and follow up on that. Uh, my other question is around the budget allocation. Can we please have the detail on the expenditure as it pertains to the department? I understand we can't get really the detail from Stats SA, but in terms of the expenditure, uh, could they please give us a breakdown? What exactly were the funds used for? And again, a comment is that it seems the department has succeeded to do all of this work in two years, not really in three years, but they had budgeted for three years. So you, they've actually done this work without the 90 million that they had budgeted for initially. So in retrospect, do they think that they had over budgeted for this work? Because I'm really surprised that they would have uh, 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 budgeted for three tranches of, of money from Treasury 
and yet they have completed it without the original 90 Honorable million. Honorable Mbabama, if you can just repeat what you said, we lost you a bit for the question. Oh, the last question on the budget. I am yeah. saying, I am saying they budgeted 90 million for the first year, that is 2017-2018, and then it was 100 million for the following year, and then they uh, were allocated 51 million for the last year. But they, have comp they are going to complete the work now in August 2020 without having used the original 90 million. So what I'm saying is, in retrospect, do they think that they had over budgeted for this whole project over over the um, over the three years? And the last question, Chair, is in terms of Gauteng and Northwest, what does the gentleman mean when he says that they are doing all that we can? Have they actually gone to these two provinces? Are they, have they seen a shortage? In their, in their people on the ground, the extension officers on the ground. Exactly what is the problem in the two provinces? Thank you, Chair. Thanks, uh, Honorable Mbabama. Honorable I members, I'll be switching off my network, my video because of poor network on my side now and then. Can we have uh, Honorable Kebekulu? He left the conservation. Uh -huh. Honorable left the... lost connection. Honorable yes. Kappa. Kappa. I'm here also. I'm also yes, here. we'll come back to you, Mama. So, Honorable right. Kappa. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my first question is the, the one that Honorable Mbabama has touched. I was concerned about the number, the, 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 the fact that only those who are above or from 50,000 and above. And then I just want some clarity that what happens to those who are below? And to me, this is quite a number of people who have who are who farm but who cannot have that turnover 50,000. Is does that mean that there is, is it exclusion or that part they are in this part they are just uh, left it is postponed for another time? That's explanation because these are the people we stay with, we live with. The second question is on the budget. Uh, just also some explanation why, I mean, about the non expenditure That would be a simple one. There's also that part of Mpumalanga and Free State where you have the lowest number of farmers and yet you have the lowest number of data collection. What does that happen again? What, how has that happened? What did that happen? So that when there's, there are fewer farmers and yet data collection becomes lower than the other other provinces. In Bumalanga, there is that, that's a clarity on that one, because there's that data collection of 131%. Uh, just to get that, when the data collection becomes more than it, it, it is 100%, does it mean that there's even data which was not necessary which was collected? It's that, that surplus of data collection. Uh, with these, thank you, sir. These are the only questions I needed some clarity on. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Honorable Kappa. Honorable State. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, some of my questions have been asked, so I'll go to others. Uh, Chairperson, the first one is the the IT system that's used. Uh, I, I remember there was quite a big amount that the department reported on the budget that was used for that. Uh, who is managing that uh, within the department and who will have access to that information going forward? Uh, Chair, I know that in the past there were certain uh, fights about certain things and, and, and information, so I uh, I would like us to, to get that. Someone is speaking, Chair, on the phone. 
Then, uh, Honorable Maso, please mute. Honorable Maso, please mute. You can go on, continue, Honorable Stein. Uh, Chairperson, uh, I'm looking at the information on the data collected per province. Uh, as far as I can remember, we were informed that 55,000 farmers applied for the COVID uh, relief fund. But if I look at the total numbers of this data collected per province, it doesn't reflect that. So I would like to find out from the department who were the people that's collecting this data in the first place and what is the link between that and the applications of people that applied for the COVID fund? So if someone applied and remember one of the criteria or qualification that the minister has put out is that uh, you must be on the data or if you are not, you must be added onto this data. So uh, I, I'm looking at the stats. Link to that, Chairperson, I am very concerned uh, looking back at previous reports over years from different departments on on farmers, they said they helped, especially KZN. I'm looking at the total number of farmers registered in KZN is 17,000. I don't have the stats in front of me, but they have re registered um, apparently more than you know 20 or 30,000 people that they said they helped in the past. So can we get some idea? idea on on you know information that was supposedly already to be in the hands of different departments and that how it will be uh, linked to this farmer register uh, and then uh, as said previously the breakdown of the budget chair I, I'm very interested in that thank you thanks uh, honorable state Honorable Marshall. Honorable Chair. Uh, let me take this opportunity and thank you very much, Chair, and also uh, greet my fellow, my colleagues over there. And uh, also my greetings must go to the minister and uh, deputy ministers that are present, uh, chairperson and officials of the department, Good, good. it will be good morning or good day because it's already during the day. Thank you. Uh, chairperson, my input will be on rural agricultural pro pro productivity. Uh, statistical, statistical data is very critical in measuring the performance and the growth of the agri agricultural sector. We commend, we commend the initiatives taken by the department together with the uh, state South Africa. There are research duties uh, that claims that there is a, a correlation between the agricultural productivity and security of land tenure. Has the department looked into the impact of the of the in the impact and insecure, insecure land tenure rights on agricultural productivity in the rural areas. If not, how will the department ensure that such studies is, is conducted in order to measure the level and capacity of the agricultural land development in productive, in productive land use? That is question number one, H. Person. Number two, how will the department ensure that the profiling of the farmer in the farmers in the farmer in the farm register uh, attract younger farmers into database? Given the fact that one of the face value of it, most farmers are above the age of CDC. I just wanted to check on that. But lastly, as the department will be answering, and I think my minister is also here. To, 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 to just touch on the plus farm. You know, there are certain farms that uh, the department has identified to assist them. And yet when you visit those farms, you find that there were very good business plans. There were very good plans of our own departments that has started, but this farm is collapsing. When you check what is wrong, what is happening, there is no one is giving you an answer. I think, Honorable Minister, I do have one of the, example 
of what I'm talking about, of which I wanted to, to say to the minister, let's take into, let's look into that. Let's help our people. I know you are very uh, passionate in making sure that our people get better lives. There is a farm by the name of uh, yes. uh, Venduhuk, number 50LR, in Lepalale, under Waterbeck. I just wanted the minister to follow that up. I will submit the document to the department in the province. They will submit it to the Department of uh, 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 Agriculture to your, uh, your honorable minister so that you can check what is happening here. Something is not right and we need to assist them. Thank you. Thanks, Honorable Mosho. Honorable Montredi. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. A very good morning to uh, all in the meeting. Chair, I've got a few questions that I would like to pose to the department here. Slide five. Uh, is the the department in their presentation on slide five, they have a, there's a pyramid table there which reflects six categories of farmers uh, that starts with your mega and goes to your, your household and or vulnerable. I want to check from the side of the department, how many categories of farmers out of the six were assisted in mitigating on the effects of COVID-19? That is the, the first question, Chair, that I would like to put on the, the department. Now, another question, Chair, is that uh, I want to check with the department, before COVID-19, before the lockdown started in March, how many farmers were actually registered? How many farmers did they have on their database as, uh, as registered farmers before COVID-19 started? And if there were challenges in them registering farmers, what were those challenges that actually hindered in terms of making sure that farmers are registered? Uh, uh, chair. Now, uh, another thing, Chair, is that the farmer register that uh, we're going to have, in what format will the farmer register be? Will it be a farmer register that is available for the public? Uh, is it going to speak to farmers? Per their local municipalities, per district municipalities, per province, or is just going to be a register of farmers where, uh, and is it also going to be per category? Remember, there are six categories. Are you going to have a farmer register that indicates there to say, these are farmers that fall within the mega or the household uh, 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 registration chair? The last issue chair is on slide six and slide 10. I want to believe that on slide six, it's the categories of farmer of, of registered farmers. Now, on slide 10, it says it's the data collected by 10th of July 2020. I want to link these slides and say of the farmers that are reflected in slide 10, how many makes or are those only farmers in the category that the department intervened for the COVID-19 because the impression that I'm getting in Meman gets is that mostly this database is of farmers that applied for the COVID-19. Now, uh, it will not be a true reflection that indeed that is the number of farmers that we have in the borders because numbers are quite low. Are these numbers only for those that managed to make a submission for the COVID-19 or it goes beyond submissions on the COVID-19 chair. Is the data, last question chair, is that the data collection, is it still ongoing? Or uh, the register has been closed and finalized. Is it still ongoing? How often will it be updated, chair? Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Honorable Montwedi. Honorable Chete. Are you still connected to my chat? Can we move to Honorable Matthias in absence of my chat?
Honorable Matthias. Honorable Masat, rescue us if you are still connected. Thank you very much, Chair. Okay. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I, can I kindly apologize for not putting on the video? Uh, I'm also competing with the network. Um, first and foremost, um, let me welcome the presentation made by the department. But firstly, let one also commend the department for finally coming up with a presentation that speaks to the implementation of this particular program. And um, secondly, the fact that there are time frames, it gives comfort to one that at least by end of October, we will be having a documented uh, information in as far as the, uh, the farmer register is concerned. Uh, my question, Chair, is on the data collection. And I want to check the authenticity of the data and whether this data has been verified uh, in, in as far as the whether these farmers do really exist, they are there. Secondly, Chair, I want to ask whether what was the involvement of farmer organizations? I remember at some point when we were doing, uh, we having a presentation from provinces on disaster, uh, preparing for the planting season. We had organization coming through, raising a number of questions. Whether were they involved in the process of this data collection? Three, Chair, is on the categories of farmers. I see an on presentation, Slide five, as Honorable Mundredi indicated, there are five categories that are there. But uh, the presentation does not necessarily speak on uh, specifically on youth, farmers owned by young people, and how many among these ones that are going to be assisted or are registered, those who are, who are with a turnover of 50,000 to 1 million. Because my worry is, uh, my, my concern is most of uh, farmers or young people who are participating in this particular space, they may not necessarily be at 50,000 to 1 million turnover category. Is there a specific program that will actually focus mainly on young people? I'm rising on this particular matter specifically because when we, are, when we, re, when we remember on the on the, 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 the uh, criteria that the minister and the department used for COVID-19 relief, there was a specific mention of 40% uh, going to the youth. Now, if we don't have many farmers in that particular space, and remember, even on the report that we received as a PC on young people, it was way less than 40%. Will, that, uh, will there be a specific program that is going to focus there because we ought we ought to appreciate the fact that um, agriculture is one of the main drivers in the next decade, and and in the current decade actually, and uh, to move from micro to macro level, it will take enormous um, initiative from the department to ensure that young people are really participating in this particular uh, um, in this in this particular agricultural space. Uh, but over and above, Chair, I must say uh, we do appreciate the fact that the department has finally came through on this particular program and we, we commend the department and we'll be looking forward to October where the report will be presented. Thank you very much, Chair. Thanks, uh, Honorable Masati. Honorable Masipa. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm not, uh, I'll, yeah, I don't have, uh, Chair, thanks very much. I don't have much questions, uh, but I think uh, I'll, I'm just going to make a, an observation because this is pre, 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 preliminary report, sorry. This is preliminary report, so we are still going to get the final report. Um, I think the observation I made is that the minister made it very clear that commercial farmers are getting larger and uh, many farmers are falling off in the process. 
And one of the reasons that is driving this, as far as I'm concerned, is obviously farmers are becoming in, heavily indebted. And you you are picking up that a lot of these farmers are, are, are really uh, struggling because of the issue of the drought and the issue of, uh, obviously, the uh, the issue that we have experienced as a result of foot and mouth disease. So those problems actually have created that many of the farmers are struggling at the moment. The question that I would have for the minister in this regard, and obviously, you know, that could be addressed at a later stage, is about how the, the department is planning to bridge the gap between what the department is providing as grant to these farmers and obviously the need, because most of the time, the needs of the farmers are higher than what the department is providing. And we have seen that even recently that we continue with the grant without really looking at other alternatives of ensuring that, you know, we leverage off the grant in order to ensure that the farmers are able to sustain themselves on the farm. Many of the farms that were bought by the department to support the reforms are not uh, productive at the moment. And the reasons for, for the unproductiveness is because they cannot sustain themselves financially. Our budget allocation is about 1.4% of the consolidated budget, uh, which is not sufficient. Pre-1994, the, the budget allocation for agriculture was about 2.5%. And if you compare to what the budget allocation is for now, where we require to transform and to do all the other, you know, uh, 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 call it redress um, uh, obligations, our budget allocation is not enough. Therefore, I think what is most important is that we need to find a way of leveraging of the private sector participation in assisting and growing the new entrants and obviously growing the sector as such. So I think, Minister, these are some of the things that I think at the end when this report is finished, you might just have to really address them because it is important. This is a statistic that I think we all need it. We all need to have this scientific base of addressing commercial agriculture and obviously addressing as well as the new entrants. Uh, Chair, I think that's my contribution. Thanks very much. Thanks, uh, Honorable Masipa. Honorable members, we lost other members, due members to, lost. to network challenges. And in addition to what uh, my colleagues has indicated, let me also appreciate the work that has been done thus far. The indication is that it is still continuing, like Honorable Masipa is indicating that this is a preliminary report. Let me also emphasize the need for the budget breakdown, looking at the unspent funds that were initially budgeted for. But uh, I also appreciate the fact that uh, there seems to be stakeholder involvement in the whole process. Equally worried about Northwest and Gauteng, uh, and my colleagues has, in the, has asked already what is being done and what are the challenges, in fact, in these provinces. That is my point also. But, uh, DG, I want to check, as uh, Honorable uh, Masati has spoken and touched on issues to youth. We're having a policy in the department that has drafted yeah, vulnerable groups. How does this policy find expression on this activity? Based on the question that has been asked of the 50,000 uh, 50, mark, we're coming now out of the COVID uh, alleviation program that uh, closed out many of our farmers because of the very same criteria. Now, if we want to expand agriculture, if we want to capture the sector and assist them, as the minister has indicated, that this kind of database is going to assist even to identify where support is needed. With the press of the button, my take is that we should be able to know, for there's this category of farmer, 
that needs support or the impact as when we measure it. How are we going to make it if we don't have a deliberate decision to indicate or to bring women, to bring disabled farmers, to bring uh, our youth deliberately so into the picture and we put up such a criteria that uh, kicks them out. One of the honorable members asked it correctly to say, what is it that we're doing, that honorable Mbamama, with those that are below the smallholders? That is your subsistence farmers. Now, how are we going to bring them back? Does this mean with time they will always be limited or they will always be left out when we have to assist them if they doesn't if they are not there on the register honorable masati has uh, touched on the issue of uh, verification of the data i also want to ask how are you going to undertake a quality assurance in this regard that is making sure that farmers that have been registered and the information that has been uh, collected from them is uh, an accurate information. Is there a plan for making sure that uh, there's a quality assurance in that regard? Uh, having said, let me give back to you, uh, DG and your team to respond to the submissions made by honorable members. Um, maybe before the DG, um... Honorable Shape, there was a question that was asked by uh, Honorable Matipe specifically to the minister. All right, Would minister. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Just to say, firstly, this presentation is a presentation of work done that is not yet complete. When the farmer register was launched by Minister Zogwane in 2018, it actually ran concurrently with the census that States SA does, you know, in on a particular period, I mean, which they do periodically on looking at the agricultural sector. And it, in the main, it concentrates on the commercial farmers. So the census report that has been tabled in March is the Stats SA Census on Commercial Farm in South Africa. This one, when Honorable Zogwana launched it, was targeting your smallholder farmers. The next phase would actually look at your subsistence, which means below your 50,000 um, income as a threshold. Because we do appreciate that your family farms or rather subsistence farmers are a critical uh, player in terms of household food security. So it's not that they are excluded. I thought it is important for me, uh, Chairperson, to highlight that. Secondly, I also want to indicate that if you look in the uh, presentation, it indicates uh, what the various sections in terms of the information will reflect. On section one, that's where we deal with the personal data of the farmer, the demographics, which will therefore indicate youth, women, or people with disability. So, you know, so those demographics will indicate to us in terms of profile how many are young farmers who are smallholders, how many are women, and how many are people with disabilities. Production detail and land tenure will also tell us where are these farmers farming? Are they farming on communal areas? Are they farming on lease land on commercial farms? Are they farming on lease from government uh, land? So that profile will also help us to know where these uh, farmers are. The available infrastructure that will tell us what do these smallholder farmers have in terms of infrastructure? Is there any or there is nothing? What other services are they able to receive from who? Could it be from farmers organization, commodity groups, government, 
or it's out of their own uh, resources. And then we would also look at the annual turnover for the last financial um, three years to then see whether some of these farmers have graduated from subsistence to now smallholder. So this profiling will actually touch on the matters that uh, members are concerned about. But I just wanted to say that this work is still ongoing. We're at the stage where we're collecting raw data about all of these uh, farmers. So it's not yet analyzed. Honorable Brede raised concern, and I share the concern because it cannot be true that when we are taking a data and asking farmers to participate, they must actually be forced. What is important in our communication is to actually explain why is this information necessary? Why is this register supposed to be there? How will it also assist farmers themselves as well as government at different levels, as Honorable Ntwede was saying, this information, we will be available to all spheres of government, your municipalities, your district, so that they also know the profile of the producers in their locality in terms of how they can also assist these localities with other services that are not necessarily from the provincial departments of agriculture or even national, that are municipal services that these farmers also require. So this information is not an information that will uh, sit and not be user-friendly. And the comments that members are making are also helping us to actually tighten some of the issues that they think are important. I also want uh, to say the government indeed does appreciate that the consolidation, as it has been seen on the census uh, by state South Africa, it's a variety of issues that account for the consolidation. Some of it is related, as Honorable Masipa was saying, to the debt issues, but some of it is because of the arid environment where we are producing as a country. So people actually would want more land in order to be able to produce for commercial activity. And it also reflects the climatic conditions in which as a country we are in. But there are a number of uh, issues, not only the ones I've just mentioned. It is also important, as Honorable uh, Masipa was asking the question, Will the government be able to utilize this information in terms of planning on the forms of support that these farmers uh, require? The answer is yes. And Honorable Masipa, you are correct to say the government resources are not enough to be able to support the farmers on all of their needs. That's why it has been our interest to make sure that financial institutions, including the land bank, do participate in ensuring that they give affordable credit to farmers for them to be able to access credit for their investment in their farms. I just thought it's important for me to just reflect on some of those issues that honorable members have uh, raised, and the team will actually deal with the other details. Thank you very much. All right, DJ. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm going to ask DJ Kuboko to respond uh, to the other questions and, and the colleagues involved in this project. Thank you, DG. Uh, thank you, Minister. Uh, I think Minister answered uh, uh, a number of quite uh, important questions. Uh, I'm with the team here, the Director of Statistics, Ellen Matze, and I'm with uh, the Chief Director for, for IT, uh, Mezzo Sehole, uh, who has been managing the project of uh, sourcing IT equipment for this project. Uh, I also have Sitsebo uh, Mfuyo, 
who is uh, leading the team on data collection. So they will also come in somewhere, uh, honorable members. Uh, but let, let me start. I will start with um, Honorable Mbamama's question. Um, the, the, the question the Honorable Member asked refers to which stakeholders were workshopped. Uh, may I, in response, say that we will provide that information, uh, Honorable Mbabama? Uh, we do have we do have the detailed uh, information in terms of all the stakeholder engagements we held in all provinces. Uh, there was also a request to provide details uh, and breakdown of the budget. Uh, that we, we will do. That information is available. Um, the other question was. Was this over budgeted? Uh, one cannot say it was over budgeted on the basis that we did not use the 90 uh, million. Uh, but maybe one can also say uh, it, it, it was over budgeted. But what determined the budget, Honorable uh, Bamam Bamama, is the national treasury. Uh, when the National Treasury made this allocation, they said they are making the allocation for both the farmer register and the census on commercial agriculture. Uh, so so uh, they, 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 they must have determined certain variables to, to come, to, come to, to, to that figure. The question on the Northwest and uh, Gauteng, what is the department uh, going to do? What is the, the problem? Uh, as Minister indicated earlier, Honorable Member, uh, we have already engaged uh, with the two provinces uh, and they have made promises in terms of how they are going to accelerate the whole process of uh, data collection. We have had a meeting with the HOD of Gauteng. We have also had a meeting with the with the HOD of, of Northwest. They have committed that they will improve uh, the speed at which they, they collect the information. As a matter of fact, Northwest has actually made a promise to say by the end of August, their figure shall have changed completely. Then there was a question uh, by Honorable Kappa, uh, which is talking to Mpumalanga. Why is the percentage of Mpumalanga 131%? Uh, the reason for this, Honorable, the reason for this, Honorable uh, Kappa, is that we discovered. Remember that our focus is smallholder farmers. And Minister has explained the fact that it doesn't mean other categories will not be accounted for. Uh, but we are at the beginning of this um, uh, farmer register, and we started with this category of smallholder farmers. Now, what we discovered with Mpumalanga is that uh, they had collected information almost on all categories, you know? Uh, and that is the reason why their number is uh, uh, 131%. And what is going to happen is that during the data analysis, uh, there will be that inclination to sift out those farmers that would fit uh, the category of smallholder farmers. That's the reason why they are at 131%. Um, I will leave the question on IT. Uh, for uh, Mezzo Sehule, who is our CIO, uh, to deal with. And uh, I will go to uh, Honorable Maso. Uh, I think Honorable Maso uh, talked about how do we attract young people. I think Minister has, has, has answered uh, that question ably. 
and uh, also including Honorable Montuidi's uh, question. Uh, but there was a question to say, is this farmer register a, a database of farmers uh, that applied for COVID-19? In responding to, to this question, I would like to say, uh, it's, 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 the, the answer is no. Uh, Honorable will remember that when an advertisement was made, one of the criteria was that the farmer must be registered in the farmer register. But the advert went on to say, if that farmer is not registered in the uh, farmer register, the department must assist that farmer uh, to be registered. So this farmer register, is not necessarily a database of those that applied. We are currently, we have currently sourced all the spreadsheets of farmers that applied for COVID-19 uh, intervention. The teams are working to look at the spreadsheets to identify those that were already in our database and those that are not, and to ensure that those that are not get registered in our in our farmer register. That is uh, one of the activities that are going on at the moment, honorable member. Uh, the last one, uh, DG from my side and, and chair, the authenticity. Um, I think it's, it's, it's honorable Matlazi who asked about the authenticity of data. As Minister has indicated, uh, this is raw data that is being collected in line with those key variables that Minister referred to. Uh, but this information is still going to be subjected to thorough analysis, uh, just to make sure that where there are gaps, such gaps are filled, where there is incorrect information, uh, like in the cases where maybe an ID was not uh, appropriately captured, uh, that particular uh, unit of work will be undertaken to ensure the authenticity of, of the information. Uh, the other question was, were farmers' unions involved? Indeed, farmers' unions were involved. As I indicated, we have a reference a group as part of the institutional mechanism for this project. Uh, within the this reference group, producer farmer reference group, we have farmers unions represented there. We also have uh, different commodity organizations represented there. We have other uh, influential key role players in, uh, 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 represented there. These are people that are dealing with farmers on the ground, and should we experience any problem, they would be handy in terms of in terms of helping us. Uh, I'm uh, looking at my time, Dr. Kwabwe. Yes, may I ask uh, Mayor Hule to? Just answer the the one on the on the IT. Thank you. Seconds, Mr. Hole. Okay, thank you, and uh, honourable chairperson, honourable members, uh, minister, and uh, DG. There was a question from um, honourable Bamba on the budget allocation, and I believe uh, Mr. Koboka has said that he will provide a a breakdown in which we will also make a contribution. But on the um, question around successes in, in two years, from an ICT point of view, what we have uh, investigate, invested in is just basic ICT. And we believe that going forward, any allocation of the enhancement of the current uh, system. Uh, Honorable Kappa has um, requested a response on the non-expenditure. We, we had used CETA uh, for the... Members, excuse me, Mr. Hole. Honorable members, please mute your microphones. Excuse me, Mr. Hole, continue. Continue, Mr. Hole. I hope I'm 
audible. Um, in terms of the land expenditure on ICT, we have gone through CETA following the correct procedures of government because uh, the amount, 7 million, is, is quite high and therefore CETA should be able to lead in this process. We provided them with the specifications of what was needed for the solutions and we had done that in a documented form and CETA was to follow through with their processes of an open tender and to also provide oversight over the processes in line with the uh, with their boards and their approvals. And from our side, because of the experience of delays and cancelled tenders, we have done month-to-month follow-ups in the uh, calendar year 2019. At the beginning of the calendar year 2020, then we started on a weekly follow-up and uh, CISA then gave us a report with the tender that they had narrowed their pool of uh, suppliers and those the pool of suppliers was not meeting requirements. The standard requirements would be the SARS, does the person pay tax, uh, do, they, uh, do they provide their ID? And at that time, we were already uh, in the second week of March, uh, and therefore we lost that opportunity of a, a, a procuring. And then the Honourable uh, Stain had requested us to give her the details of the ICT, which we will provide in the details breakdown of the expenditure on IT. But in general, it is a, a, the server environment that belongs to the department that we have invested in the connectivity, the whole connectivity which we have invested, the backup infrastructure, and also the, the recovery uh, that also includes the, the firewall and the internal development of the system. It is an, an asset that belongs to the to the department. At the end point, end point or the edge, at the user end, um, we, we have smart pens and also some facilities that would allow for the location or the GPS so that we can verify the geography where the, the farm is located. So we will provide all that. And then lastly, it was Honorable Tape who was also asked about the budget breakdown and I think it would be part of that breakdown that will be provided via the Office of DDG Kaboka. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you, Ms. Wale. Honorable members, can we then move to the last presentation on implementation of the um, constitutional court ruling for the settlement of uh, labor tenants' claims? We having... No. Uh, we're not doing well in terms of time. Can we request you, uh, DG, just to summarize so that we allow members to engage with the presentation? Thanks. Thank you very much, Chair. The, the presentation is uh, coming up uh, in the screen. Uh, the outline is per the requirement of the committee in the letter to the department. Briefly, the background, Chairperson, here is that uh, the, the court uh, 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 has come up with an award against the department for the establishment of the office of the master to supervise uh, the, the, the labor tenants. Uh, as you can see, the background there, we had over 20,000 labor tenant claims uh, as were, that were lodged as at the 31st of March uh, 20, uh, 20, 2001, rather, sorry. And we have some 9,300 that are outstanding currently. One of the challenges that led to the slowing down, if not the collapse of the resolution or settlement of labor tenant claims, was that sometime in 2009, the department moved away from the grants-based approach in terms of land acquisition, but rather focused mainly on the proactive land acquisition strategy, uh, which meant that uh, as much as the department was buying land, uh, it was mainly focused on land redistribution and less, less on land tenure. Uh, this matter went to court. The special master has since been appointed, as the honorable members know, the special master's main role uh, is to supervise and monitor the implementation uh, of the outstanding claims. Uh, 
uh, the, the special master is required to develop the plan in consultation with the department um, to make sure that the the outstanding number uh, of the of the claims are, are resolved. Since the uh, appointment of the special master at the beginning, or at the end of last year, the special master assumed his duties uh, at the beginning of this year, 2nd of January. We have assisted the special master to appoint uh, staff to begin to commence with his work. The special master is uh, Professor Richard Lavin, who is the former DG of the Department of Public Service and Administration. The special master was supposed to have submitted his plan to court uh, on the 31st of March. That is why we uh, supported the special master to appoint the staff uh, quickly to prepare for the development of the plan in consultation uh, with the department. I'm moving on to slide number eight, Chairperson. Do what she did. And the father would Brindani. not. Brendani, please mute. Chairperson, that is the team that uh, now comprises the office of the special master. As you can see, uh, the special master himself is uh, Richard Lavin, and those are the managers in the office that have since assumed duty uh, as at the beginning of the year, and that is the budget allocation for the establishment and the running costs of the office of the special master. Chairperson, uh, as I said earlier on, we have moved to the next slide. As I said earlier on, the special master is supposed to develop that plan. Among the things that must be in the plan is that uh, that must be addressed by the plan is the total number of claims that were lodged as at the end of the cutoff date what is the number of those that have been processed and finalized, look at the skills pools in the department and uh, determine the budget requirements uh, of the uh, settlement of the outstanding claims. Uh, in terms of uh, the Act, the Land Reform Labor Tenant Act, looking at the applications that were lodged in terms of se Section 16, we see whether the department cannot resolve those uh, as is required in terms of Section 17 of the Act, but in the case where the claims cannot be resolved amicably between the labor tenant and uh, the landowner, the Act provides for the landowner to deny whether or not the applicant is a labor tenant. In the case of a labor tenant, the landowner denying whether the farm, I mean the labor tenant, the applicant is a labor tenant or not, the matter has got to be settled in court. That is the whole process that uh, the, the, the special master needs to be supervising on the basis of the plan that would have been uh, submitted to court. There was a bit of a delay, Chairperson, uh, of the, the uh, formulation of the plan. As you know, we also had uh, the national state of disaster in terms of COVID-19. The plan was ultimately uh, uh, tabled on the 29th of May. And uh, the department was requested by the court to comment on the plan, indicate whether or not we had any objections to the plan. Indeed, we did have some objections uh, in terms of the plan, mainly because we felt that the court order was quite clear in terms of what the functions of the special master were. We felt that at, in some places, the special master was going beyond uh, his role of supervising and monitoring of, 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 of the implementation of the court order, but rather wanted to go into the area of implementation of, 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 the, of the settlement of the claims. We resolved that uh, with the special master. Uh, we went to court, then the judge uh, president said, look, you go and resolve those issues between yourselves, uh, special, special master and the department, and there was a three-day workshop with the Office of the Special Master where all of these things uh, were threshed out. Uh, we have to deliver, well, through the Special Master, a revised plan by the 31st of July. And uh, the Special Master must also engage the applicants, that is the Association for Rural Advancement, uh, that uh, had taken the department to court 
to engage them on the plan and then uh, they need to provide their inputs uh, by the 17th of August. The plan therefore must be finalized by the 24th of, of August. So we are planning a further workshop. I'm on the conclusion slide, Chairperson. We are planning a further workshop with the, uh, we have, sorry, we have had a workshop with the, with, the, with the special master. I must say that uh, all the other glitches that we had experienced uh, in our engagement with the, with the special master have been resolved. Uh, we have put resources uh, before the special master we have uh, over 93 staff members that are dedicated to the resolution or settlement of labor tenant claims. We have that budget, as you see on the slide over the MTF for the settlement of the labor tenant claims, and we have factored these targets in our APP as uh, was presented earlier to the committee. That in brief, uh, Chairperson, is uh, the status with, the, with regard to the court order and the special master. Thank you very much. Chair, we can't hear you. I thought I, I have <laughs> muted. Thanks, uh, DG. Honorable members, this is the progress on the update as uh, it has been indicated by the DG. I'm looking at my time, we're not doing so much well. Are there any members that want to speak to this update report? It is still work in progress, as uh, the timelines has been alluded to. Yes, sir. Yes, Honorable Marshall, you have three seconds. Three seconds, Chair, thank you very mm. much. Um, well, as you are saying, Chairperson, that is a work uh, is 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 a is a is a, pro, is a, pro, is a as you said, Chair, that is not a, a complete uh, document. I just wanted to ask a few questions with regard to administration. But as you said, I've got three seconds. I don't know whether I will finish or not. But we also acknowledge uh, uh, this uh, this uh, spreading impact of the of the global impact as we, we have in South Africa. The department has done all possible to ensure that the prevention of the huge Honorable Marshall, can you please just go direct to the questions? Uh, Chairperson, yes, my question is with regard to. Thank you very much. My question is with regard to the the seventh. Seven seven point uh, sixty five million that has been allocated over the medium term expenditure framework, and the department has indicated that they should need, there should be need arise. They will prioritize program three. This program that has already lost close to two billion for 2020-2021. How will the the eventual impact of the overall targets under the program three? Uh, over the MTEF. That is question number one. Number two, the department made available 93 officials to work uh, on, 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 on uh, citing labor uh, tenants, citing labor tenants application, applications. And how will the implement, implement of the plan, how will the plan, uh, how will be the plan of that implements? Has the department prioritized the R and arranged for the provision of training of those 93 officials? Lastly, Chair, implementation plan. There are parts of the implementation plan that the department has objected to. What were the reasons for providing for, 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 for uh, provided by the special master in submitting to the land claim court? The implementation plan in in what what appears to have been uh, initiated action inspired by the court, having ordered collaboration between the department and a special master. Chairperson, I just wanted to under understand a few things on those things. Thank you. Honorable Mbabama. Thank you, Chair. Sorry for the delay. Um, I think mine is more of a comment. You know, when I look at the figures, the department actually um, succeeded in settling 54% of the claims 
before uh, the project was was uh, scrapped or was stopped for for some reason. Now, the rest of the claims that they want to 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 finalize, they are doing it by setting up an office of the special uh, master, according to the court, I understand that. But was it really necessary to spend seven million on five officers for the office of the special master in order for them to be able to oversee what the department is doing? I just feel that uh, it, it's quite a lot of money to spend for five people to oversee what the department is doing. To me, it is an unnecessary expenditure. Uh, I do have other questions, but I think that was my main question, Chair. I'll stop at that. Thanks, Honorable Mbabama. Honorable Masati. Chair, um, let me welcome the presentation by the DG. Uh, from my side, I don't think one can actually um, ask any questions at the moment. We'll wait uh, as, as, as time goes on to assess progress in, in as far as implementation is concerned. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, my Honorable Stein. Thank you, Chair Person. Uh, Chair, thank you yeah, for the presentation. I think it's very important that we do get these presentations about the court cases. My first one is a general concern, Chair Person, that I also voiced uh, last week. And that is that the department seems to be constantly losing court cases. So I ask again that we get some kind of presentation in future on court cases. The reasons why the department keep on losing court cases, Chairperson, I think we know that um, the department is picking and choosing, you know, which sections of legislation they want to follow. Legislation is there to be followed. And if we don't follow it, we will get these scathing court cases against the department constantly. Chair, my question would be if we can get this plan that was developed by the special master uh, so that ourselves can also follow up uh, on the process uh, and what were the sections that the department were not happy about, uh, Chair, so that we can keep track on that. Thank you. Thanks, my Honourable Chair. Honorable Shatta, are you there? Let's move to Honorable Masipa. Hi, Chair. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Chair, I think um, uh, I have got no question, but I think my comment will be just to say that uh, uh, it is important that this um, particular establishment really work for us because it's a bad reflection on us with regards to all these matters that come before court. As parliamentarian, we need to do a better job. And I think it is very important that the department really deliver and ensure that this work and that all these uh, claims against, you know, the department, you know, uh, are managed and ensure that we don't get all these matters appearing before us. I thank you, Chair. Thanks, Ndote Masipa. Honorable Montwedi. Ndote Montwedi, how are you? Can I come after Honorable Matthias, please? Uh -uh. I'm giving you, a, I've not called Honorable Matthias. Honorable Montwedi, you are there on the platform. If you don't have anything, you just indicate. He's being respectful, Chair. <laughs> I'm not going back to him, Honorable Matthias. I can't relay for Omonele. <laughs> I'm not going to agree to that one. <laughs> well, yes, thank, 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 Look, you, uh, uh, you allow me to. Yes. I'm continuing, Tate Matthias. Between 20, tw uh, 2001, when this program was stopped by the court, and now, 
Many of our people have been evicted. Many of the farm tenants and farm laborers have been evicted from farms. Some have been misplaced. And that will affect significantly the number of applicants from the, the 20,000 that applied then and they're standing of about 9,000. 9, and the point is, between then and now, the special master must do a survey on the number of farm or labor tenants or farm, farm workers who have been evicted and misplaced who are duly eligible or entitled to be helped in terms of this program. That's the first submission I make. The second submission is, and I agree with Honorable Masati, let's wait for the special master to present to the department and to the committee a comprehensive implementation plan. And in that implementation plan, we need to have a survey or a statistical information about people who have been displaced and who have been evicted, which will hugely affect the number of uh, applicants. When you drive between Cradock and Middlebeck, that are in the Eastern Cape, there are families that have been evicted and, and displaced along the road as you drive between the two towns. It is such cases that the, the special master must go investigate, and such cases are all over South Africa. Thank you so much. Thanks, uh, Honorable Matthias. Honorable Kappa? Honorable Kappa? Honorable Briet, let's move to you. Thank you, Chairperson. I will be quick. I think I agree with all of my colleagues thus far. Um, maybe just to add to, um, I would concur and I would, I would like to see a plan from the Spatial Master. Um, it seems to me, and I think I've mentioned this in a few other committees, that we talk about these plans and there's this plan and there's that plan and and we have this plan we're walking, working towards and we never actually really see these plans and we as a committee never really get to engage in these plans. So I would like to I would like to second that that motion um, that that we see the plan of the spatial master and I would like to see um, to see what the plan of action is but also whether there is value for money because I have to say. Um, Honourable Chair, my my concerns are, are those that, that Honourable Mbabama have also reiterated in terms of, I think it was 2.3 million we are spending on the spatial master himself and then over a million rand um, per person for the other managers. And that is quite val worrying, um, specifically in terms of the money that has already been spent on this. Um, um, yeah, so I just said the, the funds and a value a value for money. And then chairperson, just lastly, and I think Honourable Stain mentioned it, we see a lot of a lot of legislation being found unconstitutional. And if I remember correctly, I think it was with the Ultra Bill where where the department said we're handling these two sections that have already been found that are unconstitutional, but we predict that this and this and this. And I think there were three or four more sections in that exact legislation. That um, that the department is also finding problematic, and that their vision will also be found un unconstitutional. So I would like from I would like to know from the department: Do we have a plan of action in terms of all of these legislation having to do with agriculture or land reform, and um, that we are envisioning will be problematic? Um, because I'm also concerned by the amount of time, the amount of money we are spending on courts. Uh, that we that we are envisioning to actually um, look at all these legislation and revise all these legislation to actually make it more constitutional. Um, do we have that plan, or are we are we looking at that? Um, but that is all from me. Thank you, Chair. Honourable Chair, are you still here? Honourable Montedi, take a bite. In a minute, because you gave over your allocated time to Honorable Matthias. Muntwedi. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Just a quick one. I I've been struggling with network chair. I may ask something that has already been asked, but I want to check with the department of the total outstanding claim. Uh, how how 
do they anticipate uh, uh, finalizing them as soon as everything has started rolling with the office of the master in on board? I want to know how soon will they finalize those 9,000 or so outstanding claims? Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Honorable Montedi. Honorable members, those are the questions and comments. Let me also reiterate the concern, uh, Honorable Minister, Honorable Deputy Minister Lamene, on the court cases that the department continue to lose. And uh, it, I am mindful that uh, there's a review of legislation, but particularly on the communal tenor side and everything. How does this uh, process of the department reviewal impacting on these other ones? Are we taking cognizance of all the legislation that we have, not only selecting those that uh, have been uh, found wanting giddy courts? For what, what is the plan within the department to make sure that the legislation that we have in that needs to be reviewed gets reviewed? And I think I agree with Honorable Mashatsi that uh, this is work in progress, like I've indicated. Let's wait for the plan and let's wait for the deadline here, August, and take it from there. Uh, Minister Ndiji, I'm handing over to you. Thank, thank you, Chairperson. Um, the, the legislation that is subject to review, I think, the, the legislation uh, that uh, provides for the settlement of late tenant claims has not been found to be unconstitutional. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the legislation. It was the implementation or fail of the department to implement the legislation. Uh, I think that is what the court judgment is about. I think there's the ultra is before uh, the committee, but we are doing a comprehensive review of the ALTRA because of its likely implications on the communal land tenure bill that we are we, that we, we are developing. We take note of the members' comment uh, concerns about the cost structure of the office of the special master. Um, with regard to the comments by Honorable Matthias, said that uh, the, there must be a survey of the evicted uh, persons. The special master can only do that which is provided for in the court order, and one of and 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 the survey is not provided for in the court order, and therefore the special master can't do that because it's outside of the court order. Um, we have a five-year uh, plan that we have drafted with the with the special master that is the period within which we 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 want to settle all the outstanding 9000 uh, labor tenant claims that will be my response uh, madam chair i'm sure i'm sure the minister may want to come in then. well thank you very much uh, dg and thank you very much uh, honorable uh, chairperson and members uh, we've taken note of the issues that the uh, members have raised with regard to our uh, issues. With the DG having said that we are looking at the reviewing of the whole of the ultra bill, simultaneously we are actually developing a litigation strategy which would also involve reviewing our legislation currently and see to what extent some of those poses a threat. And I do appreciate what members are saying because indeed they are met, the resources that get put in terms of litigation are really resources which would help us to track land reform. But as members would know, some of them are not, you know, out of our own initiation or negligence. Some of it relates to the support that we give for legal uh, support to those who are evicted, for instance, as well as to the claimant community where there might be issues of negotiation, like in the Ebenezer case. So, honorable members, we do take note the comments that we're making, and I must say that I have had a meeting between Minister of Justice and the uh, head of the Land Claims Court, uh, Judge Mir, also on this issue of the staffing of the master. 
master's office because our view when we engage with the master after his appointment we actually thought it was going to be prudent to save resources by having him within the departmental offices but he felt uh, that he was a um, instrument of the court and therefore there will be a conflict of interest if he were going to be housed within the department which is overseeing so there were those issues which um, um, unfortunately does have an implication in terms of the expenditure of that office we also indicated to the minister of justice and the court uh, particularly judge Mead, to say it's important because this is a new area it has never happened before to see how really are we going to work in such an arrangement for instance does the master come and report or should it be the department that comes to report what level of reporting should happen in the justice committee so all of those matters are the matters that were still engaging on between the three parties arising out of the judgment so we will take a uh, the concerns that members are raising and also raise it with a uh, judge mir together with the minister of justice Lastly, Chairperson, I would I heard when you were opening the meeting, saying that as a committee, you uh, adopted the APP report of the department this morning, and we appreciate that. I just want to indicate that we will, and I hope uh, you will appreciate um, members that we will come to you probably next week and request if possible to have a meeting just for the amendment of one section that is arising out of the engagement that we've had yesterday with the presidency who actually said um, they would be willing to consider uh, giving us a support in terms of the presidential stimulus an amount of about uh, 700 million towards food security. So we're still going to finalize those and factor it in our APPs and we will then bring it to you for your consideration and approval. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. I thought it's important for me to inform the committee of those discussions that uh, have been ongoing between ourselves and the presidency. Thanks, uh, Honourable Minister. I think it will help us a lot because there has been concerns raised in that regard for that programme. Honourable Members, uh, I think we, have, we are done with what we convened the PC for. Let me also remind the Secretariat to circulate the report, the adopted report with those amendments. And as a norm for virtual meetings, uh, DG, we are requesting all these responses in writing at least by the end of business uh, this uh, Monday, if possible, the coming Monday. Let's have all these responses for record purpose and for members' convenience. Yeah. Honorable members, this brings us to the end of today's portfolio committee meeting. Let's go prepare for the three o'clock uh, National Assembly sitting and good luck with your pre uh, preparations for Mandela Day this weekend in our different constituencies. The meeting stands adjourned. Thanks. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye. A discussion between Masipa and uh... yeah, we're back in our kitchen now. <laughs>